All right, welcome back. We're here for another lecture. This one's on section 5.2 on trigonometric functions of real numbers. Uh, so today we're gonna we're really gonna get at it with some some learning about sines and cosines and tangents and, and their cofunctions, and um, uh, it's gonna be a great time. Okay, uh, I I know that from experience speaking with students, these things are. Um, they can be difficult. They can be a source of, of frustration. So, you know, try your best and uh, follow along. I'll be including, like last time, lots of examples because I know that this this theory is less well known. And so I'll try and make it concrete for you. But uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line or an email. Right? We'll go ahead and get started. So. We're going to first define a, a bunch of these things. So this is this is going to be this is going to be a, a, a bit dry. So here we go. So just like last time, we're going to be working on the unit circle. So the unit circle again is just a radius one circle centered at zero zero, centered at the origin. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at an arc length on that circle of t starting at the point 1, 0, and ending at some terminal point, right? Okay, so this is this t is an arc length. It's the length of that circle piece. All right, so let's define some different things here. Uh, so t is any real number, and p of x comma y is the terminal point. on the unit circle. And here's where we define everything. Okay, so T, let T is, <laughs> oh gracious, let T be any real number and P of X, Y be the terminal point. I feel like I was writing this in my own words, kind of also reading from the book. <laughs> it didn't, things didn't translate well. Let t be any real number and p, x, y be the terminal point on the unit circle determined by t. Okay, so this is p with some coordinates x, y. Okay, so here's what we're going to define. We're going to define six circular functions or trigonometric functions. They're functions that are defined on circles. Okay? These are functions defined on circles. Here's the first one. Sine. Its full spelling is S-I-N-E. So it's pronounced sine, but it's abbreviated S-I-N, sin. Okay, but you, re you still read it sine. Sine takes as an argument t. So sine is really, sin is really the name of this function. And you plug in an angle t. So this is function notation here. We've got the function name. We've got a list of its inputs. Okay. Just takes one thing. Just takes an angle or an arc, if you will. What does it tell you? Well, it tells you exactly the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle. That's great, isn't it? You know, last last time we were looking at some angles and I was giving you sort of the points and telling you what the, the points were and you know, root threes were flying around, root twos were flying around at one point, everybody was having a ball. But where were these numbers coming from? It wouldn't it be great if there was a function that just like you had on your calculator that you could plug in an angle and it would just tell you the y coordinate. You didn't have to like pull it out of a magic hat. Well, that's sine. Sine tells you the y coordinate. So you take any arc length, you plug it into sine, and it just tells you the y coordinate. Fair? All right, the next one, which is really nice, is cosine. So it's cosine. Spelled fully like this, C O S I N E, but abbreviated cos. COS. Still pronounced cosine. Cosine takes any angle, any arc length, and it gives you 
the x coordinate. That's great, right? Now you know exactly how to just on a calculator get either the x or the y coordinate, either in exact form or, or approximate form if, if the calculator isn't smart enough. You just gotta find the cosine button, find the sine button, you've got it. That's really great news. No more magic hats. Okay, and then there's another one that's really handy and it is called tangent. So tangent. That's the full spelling. It's literally the word tangent. It's usually abbreviated tan. It takes, again, an angle, and what it gives you is a ratio. In fact, all of these give you ratios, which we'll talk about in a bit, but this one is a little, a little more explicit. It gives you the ratio of the sine over the cosine. That is y over x. It gives you the ratio of the x and y coordinates. Okay? So we could easily, you know, determine a couple things here, but first let's require in this case for tangent that x is not zero, if that's okay. x is not zero. If x is zero, we've got a problem. But other than that, we, I mean, we could find sine and cosine and tangent. And if x is zero, we can't find tangent. We can still find cosine, it would be zero. We can still find sine, we just can't find tangent. Okay? Now there's a few others that I want to get at here before moving on. These are your three primary ones, but then there's also the reciprocal circular functions. And as the name would suggest, they're just reciprocals of these guys. So first, we're going to look at cosecant. Cosecant, spelled like this, cosecant, usually is abbreviated CSC so that you don't confuse it with cosine. Cosecant still takes an angle or an arc length, but instead of giving you an x or a y, it gives you the reciprocal of sine. Cosecant is 1 over y. So these two are related to each other, they're reciprocals of each other. And, you know, naming conventions aside, because <laughs> it would be it would be nice if the co-sign and the co-secant were related, <laughs> naming conventions aside, uh, it's not too difficult to remember that sine is related to co-secant. If, if you just remember that sine and co, there's something with a co there <laughs> that you can remember. Um, I'll give you a mnemonic device here in a minute to help you remember these things. What about cosine? What is related to cosine? Well, it's secant. It's not cosecant, it's secant. So secant, spelled the same way I spelled it in cosecant, is usually abbreviated SEC. Still accepts an angle or an arc length, and it gives you now the reciprocal of cosine, or one over x. So this one is related to this one. And then the last one is going to be related to tangent. And this is the only one that, with a naming convention, I think makes sense. It's cotangent. C-O-T-angent. Okay? So it's cotangent. Still accepts an angle T, and it is the reciprocal of tangent, so x over y. Now in all of these, we need to make special concessions. Y can't be one here. X, sorry, zero here. X can't be zero here. Y can't be zero here. Okay, there's, there's all these just little concessions we need to make when we're computing these things. What's a nice, easy way to remember these things, right? Is there a mnemonic device? Surely there's a mnemonic device. Um, yeah, there is but we'd, we'd, we're not gonna get to that. I, you know, I don't even think we're gonna get to that today. We need to first deal with these things in a, uh, first we need to deal with these things in a unit circle 
and then we'll branch out to the circles of any radius, and then we'll, we'll get into something else. Because right now the mnemonic device doesn't really, it's not very nice. So what are these things in review? These are just functions, right? You plug in an arc length, and they tell you the x or the y coordinate, or they tell you the reciprocals of those things, or they tell you ratios of the x and the y coordinates. Okay, they're pretty basic. That's all. That's all that they are. Okay, um, but they're hugely important. Hugely important. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a table. I'm going to make a big table, uh, and I'm going to fill it in with these values. And I'm going to fill it in using the the symmetries and that we used last time. Okay, so. We're going to deal with first a column for angles, column for sine of t, and I'm not going to put parentheses anymore. Okay, I, ho I hope it's okay. I'll try and separate them uh, with a little bit of space. It doesn't really get confusing until we get to like cotangents, so I hope this is okay. So here's the confusing one. If I don't put parentheses here on cotangent, it looks like COTT. But I'm, I'm leaving a little space there because this is cotangent of the angle T. Okay. All right. So what do we have here? We've got a big table now. I'm going to try my best to line these guys up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of angles here, and I'm only going to pick angles in pi... Uh, over 2 down to 0, so first quadrant. Because with what you know from reference angles, you, you shouldn't need anything else. You only need to know things in the first quadrant. And then you can use reference angles to go um, and find other things, find other angles. So here we go. Let's take an angle first of 0. This is the easy case. So at 0, What's our point? We're at the point zero, 0, Our terminal point is zero, 0, right? We haven't moved anywhere. So what is the sine of 0? Well, it's 0. That's the y-coordinate. How about the cosine? That's the x-coordinate of the terminal points. So that's 0. How about tangent? It's the ratio, right? Well, oh boy. <laughs> what is it? Tangent? is the ratio of the uh, of the uh, x and y coordinates. What am I doing? I did this in the last video too. Gracious me. There must be something wrong with me. More coffee. That's what I'm guessing. The x coordinate is 1. Let's rewind, right? When you take this point, I keep, I keep doing this. This is a circle centered at 0. The angle of 0 is at the point 1, 0. Okay, so here we go, from the beginning. I'm not gonna make a new video. <laughs> this is, but this is, this is funny, to me, to you. It's maybe just sad. When we have an angle of zero, we're at the coordinate one zero for our terminal point. The y coordinate is zero. The x coordinate is one. Okay, what is tangent? Tangent is the ratio of y over x. So this is zero over one. Okay, so zero. All right. Cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. That's one over zero. We have no idea. That's undefined. Okay, we, I can't say what one divided by zero is, neither can you. How about secant of t? That's the reciprocal of cosine. So one over one is just one. And cotangent, again, undefined. That's the reciprocal of tangent. We can't say. Tangent zero. All right, next, let's take pi over six. Let's see if I could do this. <laughs> you, you can memorize like a thousand things and then make the silliest mistakes, like saying that the terminal point for an angle of zero is zero, zero. So pi over six is right here. And we know the point, we know the coordinates for that. And I'm out of space here. This is root three over two, comma one half. Okay, so what's the sine of pi over 6? It's the y-coordinate. What's the cosine of pi?
pi over 6. Well, it's the x coordinate of the terminal point, so root 3 over 2. How about tangent? Well, it's the ratio of y over x. So that's 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Okay, I'm only going to do this one time, and I'm going to forego it every other time. We take this, we multiply it by 2 on top and bottom. That's the denominator here. And then we divide it by root 3 on top and bottom. That's the numerator here, right? We take the, re take the reciprocal of the denominator, we multiply it on top and bottom. What does that give us? That gives us everything canceling out here, the 2's canceling here, and we get a root 3 on the bottom. So 1 over root 3. Now this is not the way it's typically written, 1 over root 3. It's usually written root 3 over 3. Those are the same. You learned how to do that when we rationalized denominators. Okay. So what's the next one? Cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's 2 over root 3, which is 2 root 3 over 6. Uh, over 3, excuse me. I was going to say over 6. <laughs> 2 times 3. Oh boy, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rough video today. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent was one over root three, so this is going to be just root three. Okay. All right. Pi over four is the next one. Pi over four is this angle right here. We take pi over two and we split it right in half. And that was the nice point where the x and the y coordinates were the same. Okay? The x and the y coordinates were both root 2 over 2. That's going to make tangent and cotangent really easy to calculate because the x and the y are the same. Okay? So we also have here sine is the y coordinate of the terminal point, so it's root 2 over 2. Cosine is the x coordinate, which is the same. This is root 2 over 2. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of these guys. But these guys are just 1 over root 2. Right? When you rationalize 1 over root 2, you get root 2 over 2. So this is just root 2. And this is just root 2. Okay. Now I'm on the home stretch here. Because we're almost done with every angle in the first quadrant. The last one is pi over 3. But this one is entirely related to this one. I talked about this in the last video. The x and the y coordinates are just switched. So what was sine up there is going to be cosine here. What was cosine up there is going to be sine here. Okay? Which means that what was tangent up here is going to be cotangent down here. Because we're just switching the x's and the y's which means the ratio is flipped. And what was cotangent up here is going to be tangent here. Now you can go through and you can you can do the same thing with the fractions, right? Simplifying root 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2, you're going to get radical 3. Okay? And you can do the same thing with cotangent, taking uh, what is it? 1 half over root 3 over 2, but you're going to get the same thing, root 3 over 3. We did that for tangent before. Cosecant and secant, it's the same story. Okay, because we're just taking the reciprocals of these things on the left. So co secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's 2, which is the same as this one here. And this one is going to be the same as this one here, because it's the reciprocal of this one. So that's 2 root 3 over 2. Okay? So over 3, excuse me, over 3. Yes. Okay, so this table is getting large. And it could get bigger. We could just keep going, couldn't we? Uh, I'm going to stop there. Okay. Um, th the book goes one step further and goes pi over 2, but this is, this is pretty simple. Uh, this one is still 1. This one is now undefined and this one is now undefined.
Uh, no, 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 this one is one, uh, zero, I believe. So sine is, you know, we're up here, so we're at a height of one. So sine is one, cosine is zero. Tangent is the reciprocal of one over, sorry, not the reciprocal. It is the fraction of one over zero, which is undefined. Cosecant is the reciprocal of one. Secant is the reciprocal of zero. And cotangent is, is the reciprocal of tangent. But tangent was y over x, one over zero. The reciprocal of that is zero over one. So now we've got zero here. You could go even further and your book just goes and goes and goes and goes. These are the only ones you need. Okay? So, and, and really, I, I don't think you need to know much more than just these ones that I'll, I'll highlight here. So what I would suggest, if you know, if you're trying to think about things to memorize and commit to memory for this, I said it last time, it's really just these. Because if you have the ability to take reciprocals, then you don't need to worry about any of these. Right? If you can take reciprocals of fractions well, without mistakes, then you don't need to worry about those. You don't need to memorize these numbers. And if you can take fractions of numbers, then you don't need to worry about tangent. So if you can simplify compound fractions, you don't need to worry about memorizing any tangent numbers. The only numbers you need to commit to memory for this section, for the previous section, for latter sections, I would say, for trig functions just in general in a course, are these. And, and I would even discount that further. Don't worry about those. These are the ones. Is remembering that for an angle of pi over 4, sine and cosine are both root 2 over 2. And for an angle of pi over 6, sine is 1 half, cosine is root 3 over 2. And I would add maybe these with the caveat that you could also try and remember one thing instead of two numbers, is that they're just switched up here. Okay, Because there's some symmetry in this, in this angle. You go a third of a quarter of the way around, and you're left with a sixth. Or you go a sixth of the way around, and you're left with a third. Okay, So there's some symmetry there. So I would say these four numbers are the ones you need to commit to memory and really understand, because then you can use reference numbers all around the unit circle. Because then you can take reciprocals and find all of this stuff. And then you can take fractions and find all of this stuff. Okay, So really, students ask me, like, do I need to memorize these all? And I say, no, you don't. Memorize those four. That will definitely help you. So let's evaluate some trig values. You know what? This is not worth my time. I'm going to erase everything and just draw a new. I can tell one of my children is not very happy. <laughs> so um, let's talk about domains really quickly. Before we get into computing trig values. So first we'll talk about the domain of sine. So sine takes an angle and it gives you the y coordinate. Okay? So are there any points on this circle where you couldn't tell me the y coordinate? The answer is no. If you gave me any old point, or if I gave you any old point and told you x comma y, you're just going to say, here it is. There's the y coordinate. You know, it's like that bad joke from algebra class. Your teacher asks you to find x, and you, you like circle it on your test. You say, there it is. You would literally would do that in this case. What is the sign of this angle? Well, it's this. It's right. There it is. <laughs> OK? So the domain is any angle. Domain is all angles. The angles are real numbers. They just represent a length around either forwards or backwards or zero. So positives, negatives, or zero. So it's all reals. For cosine, it's the same thing. Because we're just talking now about finding the x-coordinate. If I gave you any angle, any arc length, and said, what's the x-coordinate for the terminal point? You'd tell me that right away. you just circle it. you say, here it is. It's, it's, it's just x. Okay. So the domain for cosine is all reals. 
all real numbers. Okay. How about for tangent? This is the this is the trickier one. So for tangent, there's a few angles that give us troubles. Because remember, tangent is y over x. So what angles give us troubles? The angles that give us trouble are the ones where the x coordinate is 0. These two. So they are this angle, pi over 2. Pi over 2, pi over 2 gives us this terminal point and this angle. This is 3 pi over 2. That gives us the terminal point 0, negative 1. In fact, there's a lot more. We could just keep going around the circle, couldn't we? We could just keep going until we got here. What's that angle in total? That's 2 pi plus pi over 2. And we could keep going until we got to this point again. What's that? That's 3 pi plus 2 pi over 2. And we keep going even further. We just keep going until we get to this one. And what's that? That's 4 pi plus pi over 2. And I hope you're seeing the, the pattern here. If we take any multiple of pi, any multiple of pi, and we add pi over 2 to it, we get to a point, a terminal point that's either up here or down here. So n pi. Any multiple of pi, if we add pi over 2 to it, we get to one of these points. Right, so what's the domain of tangent? It's everything but those. We can plug in any angle except those and we're good. Okay? So it is all reals except these guys. Okay? Now this might be a little confusing, but n just corresponds to how many half circles you go through. So if we go one time, so one pi, and then we go pi over two further, we're down here. If we go two times, right, two, two pi, that's all the way around the circle, plus pi over two. And that's up here. What about negatives? That's not a problem. Negative pi over here is halfway around backwards. And then we go pi over two forwards, we're right here. Or we go negative two pi, which is all the way around the circle in reverse, and then add pi over two, and we're up here. Okay. All right. So tangent, the domain is all real, all real numbers except n pi plus pi over two, where n is any real number. And then we've of course got the reciprocal functions. Okay, the reciprocal functions you need to do a similar analysis, um, where you look at where you're taking division by zero. So I will leave it to you uh, to figure out those domains. They're also listed in the book if you want to just look it up. But I think it's something that's worthwhile to do um, to understand what's, what's really going on in terms of domains. So with that, let's take a look at uh, signs of these trig functions. Okay, so I'm going to put on the x and y axis here. This is y, this is x. So we've got quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. And there's, there's a nice mnemonic device. Uh, all students take calculus. Okay, and 
And this mnemonic device is there to help you remember certain things about the signs of these trig functions. So all students take calculus is the way it's, it's usually said. And that's not necessarily true, but it'll hopefully get the point across. So A is the first initial of the word all. And actually, all describes that both sine and cosine and tangent, all three of those, as well as their reciprocals, are all positive. If you take any angle that is in quadrant one, so any, any angle that has a terminal point in quadrant one, any angle, every single trig function is going to be positive. Every one. No question. So this word all in the mnemonic is there to help you remember that every single trig function is positive. How about in quadrant two? Students, right? All students is the word to help you remember that. Well, this one is there for sine. Because which trig functions are positive still in quadrant two? So if you take an, a, an angle, which has a terminal point in quadrant two, we know that the y coordinate is positive. We know that the x coordinate is negative. So when you take the fraction of x over y, you still get a negative, which means tangent is negative. If you take the reciprocal of cosine, which is negative, you still get a negative thing. If you take the reciprocal of tangent to get cotangent, that is still, is still negative. Sine and its reciprocal are the only two that are positive for terminal points in quadrant two. So sine is there, sorry, the S is there to help you remember that sine is positive in quadrant two. So all students. So what about the third one? All students take, so you take an angle, any angle that ends in quadrant three, and wouldn't you know, the yeah, Y coordinate is negative, and so is the X coordinate, which means sine and cosine are both negative. But the tangent is the fraction of those two, which means it's positive. Okay, so in quadrant three, any angle which has a terminal point in quadrant three, the tangent function is positive. It's the only one. Uh, and it's reciprocal cotangent. And this should be fairly obvious where I'm going with this now. All students take calculus. The calculus, the C is there to remind you of cosine. Taking any point, any terminal point related to an angle that ends there in quadrant four, you'll see that the cosine is positive and it's the only one. Tangent's negative, sine is negative, the reciprocals of sine and tangent are negative, but cosine and its reciprocal are both positive. So this phrase, all students take calculus, helps you remember that in quadrant one, all trig functions are positive. In, tr in quadrant two, only sine and its reciprocal. In quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent and in quadrant four, only cosine and secant. Okay, just a nice little memory device. So, let's calculate some of these guys. Um, what is the, uh, what's the sine of pi over three? Do you have it memorized? Sine of pi over three? Hmm. I've got it memorized. It's one of those ones that you should too. Okay? And you should remember that it's equal to the cosine of pi over six. It's one of those things that you should remember. Right now, should you have it memorized? I don't know. I guess not. But it's root three over two. Okay? That one I'm gonna give you. But how about this one? Sine of two pi over three. How about that one? What I've said before is, you know, we need, a, we need to think about reference angles. Well, what's the reference angle for two pi over three? Well, let's make a drawing. So we take pi, which is halfway around, and we split it into thirds. And what do you notice? This was the one we just did up here, that's pi over three. Two pi over three is just adding on this one, which means what about the reference angle? The reference angle is pi over three. 
so what's the sine of 2 pi over 3? Well, if you take a horizontal line, <laughs> and if you graph it correctly, you'll notice these two terminal points are on the same height, which means they have the same y value, which means it's root 3 over 2. And that's the power of reference angles and the power of just memorizing like one or two numbers <laughs> from, the, from the unit circle. Okay? All right. How about um, how about um, sine of thirteen pi over six? Yeah, I'll make. I'll take it easy anyway. Oh, cosine thirteen pi over six. So first. That's bigger than 2 pi, isn't it? 2 pi is equal to 12 pi over 6. So it's just bigger than all the way around the circle. So we're going to go around. We get to 12 pi over 6 here. That's a horrendous 12 pi, but we'll go with it. And then we're going to go how much further? Just pi over 6 more to give us 13 pi over 6. So we end up right about there, which means this is equal to cosine of pi over 6, because that's the, that's the exact same angle, right? If we go around all the way and then just stop there, that's no different than the terminal point is the exact same terminal point as if we just just went there in the first place. Who cares about going all the way around once, right? It's redundant. But we've committed to memory that this is the same as sine of pi over 3, which we know to be root 3 over 2. Okay. All right. So let's look at um, let's look at some other things here. We're going to look at some nice identities, things that we've talked about before, even and odd functions. It turns out, if you were to look at things on the unit circle, it turns out that sine and cosine and tangent have some really nice even and odd properties. Okay, so let's look at some of those. If I take an arc t forwards and backwards. So this is positive t and negative t. What can you tell me about their x coordinates? Well, if I take a vertical line, the x coordinates are exactly the same. Well, the x coordinate function is the cosine. So what we just found out is that cosine of t is equal to the cosine of negative t, which means the cosine is even. That's handy, I think. OK, how about this? What if we took uh, the same two angles, but instead of looking at the x coordinates, we look at the y coordinates. Well, these arc lengths are the same in total length, right? T has the same length as negative T if we measure them. So however high up the positive one goes, the other one goes down the same amount. So what that says is that going down a height of sine of T is equal to sine of negative T. I said that backwards the opposite of the amount you went up for angle t is the same as how far you go down for the angle negative t. And this, by definition, says that sine is an odd function. And tangent, oh boy, tangent is the reciprocal of these guys. Tangent of t is equal to y over x. So sine of t over cosine of t. 
Okay, this is somehow this is sometimes how it's defined. Um, so what if we plug in negative t? Well then, this becomes negative and this becomes negative. But sine is an odd function, so this is negative sine of positive t. And cosine is even, so this is the same as cosine of positive t, which means this is the same as negative tangent of t. So is tangent even or odd? It's odd. And we have the same things for their reciprocals. Secant is even, cosecant is odd, cotangent is odd. Okay? So you can even more so than with reference angles, tell me more because of their even and odd properties. Right? We're basically finding all these symmetries on the unit circle with these trig functions, and we're, we're just writing down these patterns now. There's a few really, really, really fundamental patterns that we need to commit to memory. And one of them is, some of them are these, but some of the rest, which are really well known, are the reciprocal identities. So cosecant of some arc is 1 over sine. And I wrote that before, but now we're just writing it in stone. Uh, we've got secant of t is equal to 1 over cosine of t. We've got cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent of t. And then we've got these other things which are just founded upon the Pythagorean theorem. Right? We had for the for the equation of the circle, we've got x squared plus y squared is 1 for the unit circle, right? But we also know that sine and cosine are the x and the y coordinates for these points in the unit circle. So this directly translates to cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t is equal to 1 for any and all angles. This is called the Pythagorean identity for trigonometric functions. And it's possibly the most important one to have memorized. Okay? There are a couple others that you could have memorized as well, which I think you should. Um, what if you take every single one of these guys and divide it by cosine squared? What do you get? Well, the first one is 1, first term. The next one is sine squared over cosine squared. But sine over cosine is, co is tangent. So this is tangent squared of t. And 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So that's another Pythagorean identity. What if you took all of these and you divided them by sine squared instead of cosine squared? Well, this first one's going to be cosine over sine squared. That's cotangent squared of t. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. And 1 over, one over sine squared is cosecant squared of t. I, hope you, I think you can tell it's the end of the work day. It's 4.05 and my kids are wanting to play with me. I hear him screaming for me. So those are the important ones. So we talked about a lot of things today in this in this section. A lot of things. And um, that's just the nature of trig at this point. There's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of things that we are learning. These are going to be maybe new things that we're learning and whole new sort of areas of problems that we haven't really looked at before. So there's going to be a lot of this sort of basic stuff to get through. But it's going to be spread out over five sections. And then when we hit chapter six, we start over with a new chapter. We're actually going to be hitting it again. So there's going to be, I think, seven sections in a row here where we just talk about trig functions and sort of the patterns that, that come up from them. So with that, I'm done with section 5.2. And uh, I'll have one for 5.3 in the next coming days here. Um, have a great April Fool's Day tomorrow. Uh, it's April 1st tomorrow. I'm recording this a bit early. Um, but uh, I'll see you next time, okay?